Biomimicry is the conscious, conscious and conscious, conscious emulation of life's genius. Conservation begins with affection. But what happened to me was that that affection turned to intense admiration. Here are systems that work together to be a completely, not just sustainable, they work to enhance the place, all these organisms living together. Each of them are full of amazing adaptations that together work to make of every single habitat an Eden for them, a lush and livable place. And I thought that's exactly what we're looking to do here on this planet. And is anybody trying to emulate these organisms? Has anyone had that, that sense of admiration, that aha of, of from affection to admiration, you know, to deep respect, to realize that these are the consummate engineers, chemists, physicists, you know, of our planet, the aviators of our planet, you know, the sailors of our planet. They, they're, they've done everything that we want to do. You know, a journey since 1990 of starting to collect for this field. So I've had this series of ahas and ahas and ahas. Um, but by far the most enlightening moments are the ones in which I get to see people really switched on in a new way. Um, their hearts touched by, the natu by a reconnection with the natural world and people are able to get into a new kind of intimacy with the natural world. I began my career as a biologist and a science writer. And I have become a social entrepreneur because I was born into a time that plucked me from my comfortable sidelines um, and said that in a time when all of our certainties are crumbling, um, arrogance is also crumbling. And the world is ripe for a massive redesign, a massive rethink and reimagining of everything. Everywhere you look in the natural world, there's brilliance. Organisms are exquisitely adapted to their places. Life's been on Earth for 3.8 billion years. And in that time, life has learned what works and what's appropriate here and what lasts here. That's the core idea behind biomimicry. The best ideas might not be ours. They might already have been invented. Biomimicry says, you know, implicitly, there's not such a large separation between us and the rest of nature. You know, what organisms are trying to do on this planet is very similar to what we're trying to do. I think it really does have to do with coming home to this planet as a species. We've run to the end of our leash in terms of arrogance, and, and we're ready to, you know, in a prodigal way, in, in a sense, come, come home and, and say, okay, teach me again. What, what, what was that again? How do I live here on this planet over the long haul? There's a lot to this biomimicry thing I'm finding out. And if we took it all the way, this is what would happen. Mimicking natural form is only the first part of it. For instance, that feather there has these beautiful hook and barbule uh, attachments, fasteners. And if we mimicked those, say we mimicked those in a fabric, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't need to unzip the fabric, you could just open it. You could open your backpack anywhere, say. Now that would be mimicking natural form, sort of like Velcro was mimicking natural form. But what if we made that backpack out of nylon, which is an oil-based product, and we made it with heat, beat, and treat methods, and we made it in a sweatshop, and we put it on a truck spewing diesel fumes, and we, you start to miss, you start to, you start to lose the biomimicry. So really, the whole, the whole is this. Mimicking natural form is just mimicking the blueprint, the design. But then you gotta think that that feather is part of that owl, and it self-assembles on that owl through green chemistry through nature's chemistry, because that owl can't afford 
to do heat, beat, and treat industrial methods because it manufactures in and near its own body. Newsflash, so do we. If we're to stay here, if we're to fit in on this planet that gave rise to us and all these other amazing organisms, if we're going to fit in here, we have to learn how to create conditions conducive to life, too. And that's the biggest thing we're learning in biomimicry. And until we create products in their manufacture and their use and their disposal and their marketing and considering whether or not they're even needed, we place them in an economy that mimics a living system rather than a machine, then we haven't quite reached the full extent of biomimicry. It's not easy to do this, but we, we do it in steps and we do it all at once. While I was sitting there writing the book, <laughs> um, feeling like I was making it up, the last chapter my editor said, you have to have an agenda chapter. And I said, well, I, don't, I, don't, I can't be prescriptive on this. And that last chapter is sort of like what we should do next. <laughs> We've done it. If you go back and look, it's, it's, I said, let's educate in the estuary. You know, let's have biologists and engineers together. Let's have uh, an innovation matchmaker with this new thing called the internet, ask nature. <laughs> um, let's have university degrees. We just have a consultancy where there's biologists who work with inventors. Dana Baumeister shows up, <sighs> right? So Dana, Beth, Chris, Bryony, Nicole, all these people, the whole staff, have made these two organizations everything that we talked about, or I talked about in this book, sitting there making it up has happened. And who knew that the global networks would be here? Oh my God. Oh my God. You just popped up like mushrooms, like fairy mushrooms around, like woo! <laughs> and the work has moved from a meme to a movement. Here's the home. Let's do like the critters and the Galapagos did. And let's find a way, with their help, to make this place a home. Thank you very much. Have fun.